What you should be able to see at this moment in time is the authorised release certificate. So you can see it's an FAA 8130-3 Airworthiness Approval Type. Now, just to clarify, this is for what we're totally trying to, trying to understand how you'd recognise a PMA, so a Parts Manufacturer Approval, for a component. Now, just to clarify as well on this sort of matter, PMA parts only come from America. They do not come from Europe, they do not come from anywhere else. A PMA part only comes from an America. And a PMA part are approved by the Federal Aviation Administration. So there is some weight behind that. So the thing is to understand is, how would you recognize the, the paperwork or that component is a PMA part itself, or has the PMA part approval? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk you, away, walk you through this 8130 just so you have like a maybe a better understanding. So if you're recognizing or goods in receiving, you'll be able to recognize that this part is a PMA part that may be in your hand or that, you, that you've just about to do the goods in inspection. Firstly, what you should be able to understand is this. Uh, in block four, you should be able to recognize that there'll be what we call a PQ number. Now, that PQ number is... Uh, specific because that's the approval number issued by the Federal Aviation Administration and if you did a bit of research and you went to the FAA website that PQ number would be allocated to that organization and would confirm whether they can actually manufacture that part or not that's the way that works so, that, so it must have a PQ number and that would aid you with traceability and the way you would do that is search for the part number on the PMA portal under the FAA sort of website itself so it's referred to as the PQ number now the second thing to remember is that any PMA part that we're looking at is really new that's a key thing to remember so in block 11 it would be the word new PMA really drops off when we think about repaired uh, being modified being overhauled inspector tested it really doesn't come into its own. It's not really, you know, we don't really talk about PMA parts that have uh, that have been repaired or gone, had something done to them afterwards, I for maintenance purposes. So we're only talking about new items, PMA part, new only. And then for us to accept it within EASA, under the REASA requirement, then we need to identify there's three acceptable sort of terms. The first one you can just see here, I've actually showing you the combination or just one of them so but what you have to understand is in block 12 you can see those terms must not contradict each other so option number one this is this pma part is not a critical component that's the first statement option number two produced under or produced by the hold of an ars stc number whatever that number is or it's being produced under a license agreement from the holder and then yeah they got the insert the type certificate or the supplementary, supplementary type certificate number. So it must have one or a combination of those statements, but again, they must not con uh, contradict each other. And then the final bit really, to satisfy yourselves, remember we're talking about new components, then in block 13A, the first checkbox where it says approved design data and are in a condition for safe operation, then that box must also be checked. So, and that would satisfy the requirements that that part is acceptable to book in as part of your goods in requirements. So just to clarify again, the little four things you need to look out for. Box four, there should be a PQ number. Block 11 should say the word new only. And then in block 12, there should be a one or a combination of those three options you can see now. And in block 13, that approved design data and are in a condition for safe operation, that checkbox must be checked. Okay, that would satisfy the requirements that that is a PMA part. If you have any sort of queries, then you should really go back to the originator, i.e. the person who produced the form uh, with that component, and they should be able to clarify or reissue if you feel there's something missing from that. Now, one more final thing, like I said before, if you wanted to verify that that organization has the ability to produce that PMA part itself, that parts manufacturer approval, 
then simply go to the FAA website. You would then look at search for the PMA uh, database, uh, put in search by part number. Once you identify the part number, that should actually confirm the person or the organization that would be able to manufacture that. And that would clarify in the narrative under that part number, the PQ number. And that forms part of your traceability for like goods in and traceability for the whole sort of product. And that's it really. If you have any more questions about the PMA and recognizing a PMA uh, on the documentation, then please give us a call or respond to like an email. Send us an email on the sales at blue-altitude.com or hit our website uh, and then obviously drop us a line to our contact us page. Thanks for your time.